Hi, a very good morning all of you. So today's live session will focus on multiple choice questions based on yesterday's or previous live discussion. So we had a textbook discussion yesterday pertaining to specific local complications of local anesthesia. So we'll deal with some questions related to that topic. And as I said, we're going to do extremely well because it's quite obvious since we had standard textbook reference. I hope I'm audible. Do let me know if at all there is any issue with audio. And also, as we do in our study club, we will try to have scoring system to just add some fun to our discussion. So those who answer the specific question correctly, give yourself plus four. If it is wrong, minus one. And if you choose not to answer, minus two. I'll repeat, right answer plus four, wrong answer minus one, no answer, minus two so do score take your notes do score and let me know your scores at the end of the session let's see how it goes so i have around nine or ten questions so around 40 marks i'll let you know okay so i hope you guys are ready no issue so a very good morning each and every one of you so we'll start with the following questions first and foremost primary cause of needle breakers is Look into the keywords again, primary cause. Sudden unexpected movement by patient, defective manufacturing, complete insertion of needle into soft tissues, bending of needle. Everything seems to be right, but look into the keywords given in the question again. Primary cause. So what do you think is a primary cause of needle breakage? Okay, uh, so uh, everything seems to be same and similar and uh, equally right, but let me give you a brief context. See, sudden unexpected movement by patient is also a cause of needle breakage, but that's not primary cause. Let's rule it out. What about defective manufacturing? Very rare. Uh, we can't blame the manufacturer every time. It's very rare, even though there is a possibility, but it's not the primary cause. Complete insertion of needle into soft tissues. Come on. See, uh, during IA and B, we almost completely insert the needle. So do you find breakage every time you completely insert it into the soft tissues? But the fact is, as mentioned in uh, Malamed, the universal evidence shows that in almost all the breakage uh, cases, the needle has been inserted till the hub. So that's only a finding. But what's the primary cause? Bending of needle before inserting into the patient, before inserting into the soft tissues of the patient, bending of the needle by the operator, right? That's been found as a primary cause of needle breakage. So I hope you got my point, right? So if you have doubt, you can refer yesterday's textbook discussion. Good, well done. So anyways, it doesn't matter even if you're wrong as long as you are willing to learn, as long as we are willing to learn from our mistakes, right? Good, so do score simultaneously, okay? Don't worry even if your scores are low, I'm going to present my score as well. Second question, after needle breakage, the visible proximal end of needle fragment can be grasped or retrieved using hemostat, Magill intubation forceps, tweezers, pliers. So which one do you think is more appropriate answer? So as you can see, we have uh, options hemostat, Magill intubation forceps, tweezers, and pliers. Or can we use all of them? I'll show you some images. Try identifying them simultaneously. So can you identify this image? We have a locking mechanism. You can see the end, working end of this instrument. Good. And what about this? Just observe the images, I'm not going to name them. 
Okay, so I hope you have seen them. Now, let's get back to our discussion. So, hemostat, maggot intubation, forceps, both or tweezers, pliers. Okay, wonderful. So, A and B. So, those who mention only A, uh, give yourself a plus two. Okay, right. Those who said A and B, plus four. Well done. So the first image which you have seen is that of a hemostat as Rituja, Vaishnavi and others rightly mentioned. And the second one is Magil intubation forceps, right? Good. Well done. Now let's move on to the next question. For injections requiring greater penetrations, take for example I A and B. For injections requiring greater penetration into the soft tissues, use 30 gauge needle, use 25 gauge needle, Use shorter needles or use longer needles. So which option is more appropriate? And if you can tell me why, uh, that's even more appropriate. I mean, that's even better. 30 gears, 25 gears, shorter needles, longer needles. Yeah, obviously. See, first of all, the key words here are greater penetration. So greater penetration, we're talking or we're concerned about the depth of penetration, which means we're concerned about the length of the needle. So rule out options A and B. Even though, as you said, 25 gauge needle has to be used compared to 30 gauge for the obvious reasons, but we're talking about the depth of penetration. So we obviously have to go for longer needles. Why not shorter needles? So longer needles is right answer. But why not shorter needles? The reason as such is very important. Exactly, obviously, uh, common sense tells us that when we use longer needle, if at all there is any fracture, it's easy to retrieve. Uh, what about shorter needle? That's it, that's the only reason. Difficulty in retrieval? Exactly, chances of breakage. Because you almost have to penetrate the entire needle till the level of its hub. So obviously, as you know, hub is the rigid point, the point where there can be greatest chances of fracture. Well done. So D is right answer. But if you say B and D, acceptable, but a D is right answer, more appropriate for this particular question. Well done. Now, moving on to the next question, you don't have options for this. It's a blank. Most common local complication of LA injection is... Most common local complication of LA injection is, uh, let me give you options, infection, trismus, hematoma, post-injection pain. Injection, uh, infection, trismus, hematoma, post-injection pain. Oh, come on. We, we dealt with this yesterday as well. See, all of these questions are based on the points which are highlighted and which we already discussed yesterday. Come on, pain, pain is something which is quite common. As also we discussed, when you penetrate needle, damage is obvious, damage to tissues is obvious. Pain is seen mostly, uh, unless and until uh, there are some exceptional cases or in cases where patients don't perceive it, post-injection pain. So because of space constraints, I'm writing like this, but it has to be mentioned in full form, post-injection pain, okay? <laughs> Is it Christmas? I, I mean, I'm following, I followed fifth edition. If Christmas is mentioned in sixth edition, do let me know. Oh, Vaishnavi has retrieved her message, okay, fine. See, it's only a matter of uh, awareness. Uh, it's only a matter of knowing facts. If you don't know, that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's not that I know everything. Even I have to prepare, you know, I have to revise, make notes, etc. So there is nothing wrong in making mistakes. Take my word. As long as you're willing to learn from mistakes which we commit. Okay. Fantastic. Now, so you said post-injection pain. Let's move on to the next question. Assertion and reason. Infection may produce hypomobility. Reason, there can be increased pain and irritation. So let me know whether assertion and reason are true or false. Also let me know if 
reason justifies assertion so it's a two part question so obviously uh, you know with infection there will be a response from the host in the form of inflammation there can be pain because of inflammatory mediators there can be swelling because of various tissue factors so uh, in the process there will be scarring fibrosis what not so infection may produce hypermobility if you observe in, in case of trismus infection low grade infection is mentioned as one of the causes of trismus so obviously there can be increased pain and irritation which limits the movement right so both assertion and reason are true and reason justifies assertion so priya you typed as true ria true i mean google has considered that as spam and has blocked your message i just unblocked it okay uh, look into the words which you are typing justified it is justified because of pain so obviously when you have pain for example i had pain severe pain to my hand before entrance because i had to do a lot of work i couldn't actually move it hypermobility so pain leads to hypermobility common sense isn't it also because of irritation inflammation and other related factors there can be hypermobility good so both assertion and reason are true and reason justifies assertion okay wonderful now moving on to the next question all of the following are causes of trismus except trauma to blood vessels trauma to muscles injection of local anesthesia into muscles or intramuscular hemorrhage so which one do you think is the exception i mean uh, trauma to blood vessels in the process of giving la right it's understood isn't it okay <laughs> i see some of you really smart so when i create a question it doesn't mean that you'll have only one right answer it doesn't mean that you'll have a right answer at all there can be uh, several possibilities okay uh, let me clarify see trauma to muscles obviously uh, because of trauma to muscles there can be again inflammation and then muscles which are responsible for opening or closing then we can anticipate trismus so local anesthesia has been mentioned as myotoxic mycotoxic in previous edition myotoxic is more appropriate as sriparna mentioned in one of her mails so myotoxic property so obviously again trismus trauma to blood vessels leads to hematoma which can again be a contributing factor to trismus right but what about hemorrhage again the same trauma to blood vessels so none is right answer so all of the following are causes of trismus except so as few of you rightly mentioned it is none good well done okay now let's move on to the next question hematoma associated with posterior superior alveolar nerve block is primarily due to involvement of which of the following blood vessels posterior superior alveolar artery facial artery pterygoid plexus of veins all of the above before you answer look into the keywords here primarily Uh, it's not see uh, you, you should be very cautious i'll explain after you answer this so hematoma associated with face nerve block is primarily due to involvement of which of the following blood vessels see uh, I, i see some of you answering all but again as i said look into the keywords carefully if the question is hematoma associated with psa nerve block is due to involvement of all of the above is right answer but primarily because of involvement of as you know as we have seen yesterday posterior superior alveolar artery <laughs> it can't be none all the time okay well done right so but all of them are implicated right uh, contributing factors but primarily because of posterior superior alveolar artery retrieving misses is not accepted okay 
Okay. And before I proceed, let me give you some clarification, guys. Whenever I post a question, it doesn't mean that you have to choose one option for sure. That's not my objective. The objective here is to provide information to test your information or your ability to differentiate between various options. So there can be multiple right options. There can be no right answer. So uh, don't be under a condition uh, thinking that you have to select one option for sure. Forget about exam. We're not talking about exam here. We're talking about your ability to differentiate, answer any question, no matter how it is given to you, as accurately as possible. That's the only objective I have, okay? Okay, anyways, I'll get back to your queries at the end of the session, okay? Right. Now, let's move on to the next question. Hematoma is unlikely with which of the following? IANB, ASA, PSA, mental nerve block. Hematoma is unlikely with which of the following nerve blocks yeah you can you can go with asa because as mentioned in the textbook it's clearly given that during asa nerve block pressure is applied at the site of injection uh, during the administration and two to three minutes after uh, administration right so the chances of developing hematoma is highly unlikely also it's mentioned that in case of mental nerve block Clinical manifestations include discoloration of skin over mental foramen or swelling in mucobuccal fold in the region of mental foramen. As with ASNO block, pressure applied during administration of drug effectively minimizes the risk of hematoma formation during incisive nerve block. But if the question is hematoma is unlikely with, so go with ASA, as clearly mentioned in the literature. Okay, good. Well done. Moving on to the next question. On recognition of a developing hematoma, you can apply heat, cold, both, none. So which one do you think is more appropriate? You, you, you notice that there is a chance of developing hematoma and you're, you've been observing that. So what is the immediate treatment plan? We apply heat, cold, both, none. Also give me the reason. Good. So we go with cold because... Obviously, heat and cold both are analgesic. Heat causes vasodilation, which further increases the size of hematoma. But cold, as you said, causes vasoconstriction, which helps in decreasing the size of hematoma. Heat application can be done from the next day. Because of its same vasodilating property, it helps in clearing uh, blood elements, resorbing uh, blood elements, clotting, various other aspects. Okay, So it promotes healing, rather we can say, isn't it? So cold is right answer. Now I have another question because I couldn't have space here. So I'll be giving out the question, do let me know. Hematoma is unlikely with, oh, we discussed that question. Yeah, the question is, the next question, the 10th question is, hematoma subsides in, what's the time duration? Two to three days, one week, two weeks, two to three weeks. So which one do you think is more appropriate? When does hematoma subside? Yeah, one to two weeks, seven to 14 days, with or without treatment. So with or without treatment, seven to 14 days, wonderful. Now moving on to the final question, 11th question. So 11 force 44 marks, 11th question. If continued dental care, is urgent in patient with trismus, which of the following nerve block permits the patient to open his or her mouth? I'll repeat the question. If continued dental care is urgent in patients uh, with trismus, so you need to extract the tooth, you need to continue with the procedure, which of the following nerve block permits patient to open his or her mouth? Vajrani akinosi, mandibular nerve block, Gaugates, mental nerve block, inferior alveolar nerve block. So which one do you think is more appropriate? So we discussed yesterday, Vajirani Akinosi intraoral technique, right, closed mouth technique, where we're trying to block the third division of trigeminal nerve, mandibular nerve, because of which there is motor paralysis, muscle supplying, uh, 
I mean, they're now supplying the muscles of mastication. So because of this motor paralysis, right? So there can be a patient, it permits the patient to open his or her mouth. Uh, quite interesting. So Vajrani Akhinasi indications, it's clearly given that in cases with trismus, we can go with this, okay? And as you mentioned, it's Vajrani Akhinasi. A related question, as we're telling, there will be motor paralysis. Also, there will be some sensory anesthesia obviously. So which of the following develops first? Motor paralysis or sensory anesthesia? Which of them develops first upon uh, giving this Vajrani Akinasi block? So consider this 12th one as your homework, okay? So which, de which one develops first or fast? Motor paralysis or sensory anesthesia? Do refer and get back through me. Consider that 12th question as your homework, okay? So 11 questions in total. Uh, do present your scores in the meantime. I'll try to summarize all that we have discussed so far, okay? So primary cause of needle breakage, we've seen bending of needle before inserting into a patient's soft tissues uh, considered to be the primary cause of needle breakage. After needle breakage, the visible proximal end can be grasped and retrieved using hemostat and magal intubation forceps, as we have seen. The, uh, the images for time to dot. And for injections requiring greater penetration, so we use longer needles. As you know, the hub is the weakest part, the part which is more prone to fracture. And infection may produce hypomobility because of pain because of fluid accumulation and other related factors. So both assertion and reason are true and reason justifies assertion. And all of the following are, I, I think you're asking about this question, right? All of the following are causes of Christmas, except first and foremost, see even previously on several occasions, I had to clarify this time and again, um, but let me clarify once again. When I give a question, it doesn't mean that you have to select only one option. It doesn't mean that there will be a right answer in the given options. Please uh, get out of that conditioned thinking. The objective here is to uh, allow you to think in such a way that it has nothing to do with the options given in the question. The only thing that matters is whether you're getting the concept right or wrong. That's it. Okay. So when you have to choose one option, no, uh, that's not the intention here. Right, so all of the following are causes of Christmas. There can be trauma to blood vessels. We have seen because of trauma to blood vessels, there is hematoma, hemorrhage, hematoma leading to Christmas. So how can that be an appropriate answer? No, okay. Uh, by the way, I've created these questions. So uh, since I've created these questions, I have the right to say there is no right answer here because you also have a solid textbook reference as a proof. I hope you got my point. So trauma to blood vessels, trauma to muscle, injection of LA intramuscular, as well as hemorrhage, all of these are causes of trismus. So none is right answer. And hematoma associated with PSI nerve block is primarily due to involvement of posterior superior alar artery. Hematoma is unlikely with ASA, right? And on recognition of developing hematoma, you know what to apply, cold or heat. Why cold? As you rightly mentioned, it's because of vasoconstriction, which decreases the size of hematoma. Also, it numbs, acts as an analgesic. And also, I've asked you another question, like hematoma subsides in 7 to 14 days, as you guys rightly mentioned. And the indication of Vajrani Akinasi mandibular nerve block, right? Through which we can achieve motor paralysis, which permits the patient with Christmas to open his or her mouth thereby allowing us to continue the dental treatment, right? So these are some of the topics, questions which I wanted to highlight. I hope it's clear. So do make notes accordingly and consider the following question as your homework. So in case of Vajrani Akinosi mandibular nerve block, which one develops first, motor paralysis or sensory anesthesia? So that's your first homework question. And the second aspect is do make notes and then you can present your notes in mail. I'll be more than happy to see. That's to consider these tasks as your homework. I hope it's clear. And I hope you found this session informative. Uh, by the way, post your scores as well. Let's see.
So out of 44, good. By the way, my score is one. Okay, so I'm the least scorer here. So I don't feel embarrassed about presenting your scores. My score is one out of 44. Yeah, by the way, my score is one. But one is not just a score, it's even a rank. Okay, uh, let's keep that aside. Now coming to the core of the topic. So this is not my intention is behind this live session. When you have a solid reference, an authentic reference, and when you put the right amount of effort, genuine effort from your side, there is no turning back. See, I can tell you one thing for sure, whether you're right or wrong, it doesn't matter as long as you are willing to correct yourself and improvise on moment to moment basis. It's all, that's all about progress. So in this set of questions, you might have scored 44, 40, 39, 38, 35, all are excellent scores. Uh, and it's not because you scored 30 or 25, but because of your active participation, which is far more important than the scores. Uh, scores might vary but the concept remains the same. So we have gone through, we have gone through textbook reference yesterday. We tried to get all important relevant points pertaining to these topics. And now you see all the difference. It's with confidence you can answer as Vaishnavi rightly mentioned. When you answer questions, you'll have enhanced confidence. Even if you make mistakes, you will try to correlate with the previous discussion or the previous topic and then make amendments accordingly. And that's how you improvise. See, perfection is not about not making mistakes. You make mistakes, we try to commit errors, but you overcome them by making notes, learning from them, and making sure that you're not repeating the same. That's what perfection or rather excellence is all about, right? So I hope it's clear. And I wanted to make sure that you guys perceive this uh, personally, right? I hope the objective of the session has been fulfilled. So we'll see if we can incorporate more such sessions in our e-classes as well as in live sessions as well, right? So wish you all the best, love you all. And I'll see you again tomorrow. What, what do you guys say? So tomorrow is Sunday. Shall we have a general session or casual interaction or break? Uh, you guys decide. Exactly. See, I can tell you that uh, since I have coaching, just join my coaching and you'll get all good scores. That is nonsense. Irrespective of coaching you're in, it's all about getting standard references. So one of the objectives of our coaching is to promote standard references. So when you have standard references for you, you have nothing to worry about. Since I've implemented that during my preparation, I would like to promote the same. Right? I hope you got my point. So irrespective of the coaching we're providing, if you get the methodology right, you'll do great. You will do extremely great. Okay. Okay, guys. Love you all. Take care. Bye. Have a wonderful day ahead. We'll see you again tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. in standard time mostly. I'll update you with timings and the session which we are planning tomorrow. And we're going to spend considerable time tomorrow as well. Take care.